Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Quanta family. In this video, I'll be going to explain you DC load line and Q point of BJD. Before I start with explanation, let me show you outlines of this video. Here, first I'll be discussing about Q point of BJD. After that, I'll explain input DC load line for common emitter configuration. Then after I'll explain output DC load line for common emitter configuration. Based on DC load line, I'll explain you how to identify Q point. At last, I'll explain you measure of selection of Q point. So let us try to understand first what is Q point. See when you talk about Q point, then you are talking about in which region BJT operates. BJT can operate in active region, cutoff region or saturation region. So based on Q point, one can identify in which region BJT is operating, right? So Q point explains the operating region of BJT. See with BJT, we can have so many applications. We can use BJT as amplifier. We can use BJT as oscillator. We can use BJT as a filter. So as and when you use BJT as amplifier, oscillator or filter, at that time you will be using BJT in active region only. So here Q point that should be there in active region when you use BJT as amplifier, oscillator or filter. See Q point selection that one can do with the use of biasing. And in biasing usually we use DC batteries and resistors. Let me take one example. So here I am going to consider common emitter configuration. You can observe See, this is NPN transistor where here we are having input and here we are having output. So in between input and output, this emitter is common. That's why this is common emitter configuration. Now with this common emitter configuration, we want to operate this BJT in active region. To keep BJT in active region, base emitter junction should be there in forward bias and collector base junction should be there in reverse bias. You can observe here we are providing biasing with the use of VBB and RB and here we are providing biasing with the use of VCC and RC. See base emitter junction that should be there in forward bias. So here see base is of P type and emitter is of N type. So this P type is connected with positive terminal of battery and N type that is connected with negative terminal of battery. So with the use of supply VBB, we keep base emitter junction in forward bias. See in active mode, collector base junction that should be there in reverse bias. So this collector that is of N type that is connected with positive terminal of this VCC and negative terminal that is connected with emitter as emitter is common in between input and output. So with the use of BCC, we keep collector base junction in reverse bias. So here we have base emitter junction in forward bias, collector base junction in reverse bias and that is how we are keeping this BJT in active mode. So here this Q point of BJT that we select with the use of biasing potential VBB, VCC and RB, RC. Now to understand how exactly Q point is defined, here I'll be considering input and output equations. So for input equation, I'll be going to consider this loop. This is a loop which is happening at input and for output equation, here I'm going to consider a loop. Here, let us try to understand how we can have input equation. So apply, apply KVL at input. So if you apply KVL at input, see here in this loop, this VBB that is happening from minus to plus. So VBB that is plus. And then you see in this loop, this VBE that is happening from plus to minus. So minus VBE. And that is equals to here in this loop, we have this resistance RB through which current is IB. So this is equals to IB RB. So that is how we can have input equation. Let us say this is equation number one. Now 
to get output equation let us apply kvl at output so if you apply kvl at output you see here we have a loop so in this loop this vcc that is happening from minus to plus so here i am writing vcc positive then in this loop you see vc that is happening from plus to minus so minus vc that i need to write and that is equals to in this loop through rc current is ic so i can say ic rc so this is second equation right so now we are having two equations one is for input and second is for output with the use of these equations we will be identifying dc load line and q point so here first of all what i am going to do is i am going to consider dc load line for input so here you can observe equation which we have derived right that is that is vbb minus vb that is equals to ibrb and to plot dc load line for common emitter configuration i have already explained you input characteristic input characteristic that is happening in between vb and ib see input characteristic that is happening in between vb and ib where we will be keeping vc constant right so this is what the basic characteristic that i have already explained in my last videos here let us try to understand how dc load line is there so to plot dc load line what we will be going to do is we will be going to use this equation so in this let us consider let us consider what if ib is zero so as if ib is equals to zero then we need to find what is vbe so vbe that will be vbb right this is zero so vb is equals to vbb so here you see as if ib is zero at the time this vb that is equals to vbb so here we are having vbb right here we are having vbb when ib is zero and what if vb is zero so as if vb is zero then we need to find what is ib so here you see this is zero so ib will be vbb divided by rb right so ib that will be equals to vbb divided by rb right so now see here vb is zero at the time ib will be how much ib will be vbb divided by rb right now see we are having two points for this equation and this is what equation of line so you can draw a line by connecting these two points so now i am going to draw a line by connecting these two points so you can observe with this line this characteristic is intersecting at these points right so see this is a characteristic which is happening when vc is equals to 5 volt this is a characteristic which is happening when vc is equals to 10 volt and this is a characteristic which is happening when vc is equals to 15 volt so as if you keep vc is equals to 5 volt at the time we are selecting q point that is this one let us say it is q1 as if vc that is 10 voltage at the time this q point that is getting shifted over here that is q2 and as if you increase vc q point that is getting shifted over here right so see based on vbb and rb you can have dc load line and this dc load line that is intersecting this characteristic at this points those are q points right now consider these are the q points which we have it with respect to different values of vc e now same thing that i'm going to do for output characteristics so here see with output we are having kvl equation which i have derived so let me take this equation and this equation that i'm going to use it over here for output characteristic so with output characteristic if you observe see with this circuit 
we are having characteristic in between VCE and IC. Output characteristic that is there in between VCE and IC. At that time we are keeping IB constant. Right. So here we are having equation which I have already explained you for output. Now to draw DC load line. First of all I need to take two points. So first what I will be going to do is I will be going to consider VCE 0. So what if VCE is 0? If it is 0 then what is IC? IC will be VCC divided by RC. And what if IC is 0? If IC is 0 then this is 0 so VC is equals to VCC. Right. So that is how we are having two points. So here first of all we need to substitute those points. So if VC is 0 then IC is equals to VCC by RC. So if VC is 0 then IC is this point let us say this point is let us say this point is VCC by RC. And as if IC is 0 means here this is the line at the time VC at the time VCE VCE that is VCC. So let us say this is the point where VCE is equals to VCC. Now by joining these two points we can have DC load line. So here let me join these two points. So you can observe now we are having DC load line. Now with this DC load line if you observe this characteristic of common emitter configuration and output then you see here we are having cutoff region, here we are having active region and see this IB is resulting into constant IC current. It is not exactly constant but you can say IC is almost constant as per the characteristic. So if IB is 150 microampere, IC is almost this constant. If IB is this then IC is constant like this. Right. So this DC load line that is interacting with this characteristic at these points. Right. At these different points you can observe. So these are the Q points at which BJP can operate. Right. And see this Q points explains what? This Q point explains you see over here BJT is there in cutoff region over here BJT is there in saturation region and with this blue color Q points BJT is there in active mode. Now what will happen based on this Q point? Based on this Q point there are a few basic things that you need to understand. See you need to keep this Q point in the middle of this DC load line. If you keep Q point in the middle then you can have proper amplification, you can have proper filtration as well as you can have proper oscillation. The reason is in amplifier, in filter and in oscillator Q point should be there in active region. Let me explain you that by basic analogy. Let us consider this Q point. Let us consider this Q point. So what I am going to do is I am going to draw a line from here. Right. I am going to draw a line from here. And see one more line that I am stretching it from here. Right. Now see with this line we need to understand one thing. Let us try to understand this with respect to amplifier. So here see with this circuit let us say we are giving some signal that is weak signal but output signal that is amplified signal that is what we wanted to have amplified output right so here so here you see after this point after this point signal is going in cutoff region after this point with this line signal is going in cutoff region so practically practically as if your amplified signal is happening like this right as if your amplified signal that is happening like this then see after this point this portion of waveform that is going in cutoff and as it is going in cutoff 
this much part that is getting clipped this much part that is getting clipped so this waveform will not appear at output side right let me take another example so here let me consider a q point from here so this is the q point which we are having right q point from here now with this q point see from here onwards by this green from here onwards things are going in saturation so i am extending a line from here right now with this line see if i say my output that should be happening like this if i say my output that is happening like this right then here if you observe after this line over here bjt is going inside saturation so this much part that is going in saturation and as it is going in saturation this much part will be clipped over here at output so signal distortion will happen portion of waveform that will get clipped now let me take one more example so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to consider a q point from center right i'm going to consider q point from center now here see signal is getting amplified like this right signal is getting amplified like this you can observe so nothing is going inside cutoff and saturation so entire waveform entire waveform that will be appeared at output why the reason is this q point is there in the middle of dc load line right that is why q point is very essential now let me discuss about measure of selection of q point see q point should be there in active region otherwise waveform will get clipped right so q point should be there in the center of dc load line and that is what i have explained you with respect to some case study c1 right see q point should not be inclined towards saturation region otherwise what will happen portion of waveform that will go beyond saturation and that is getting clipped and q point should not be inclined towards cutoff region otherwise what will happen otherwise portion of the signal beyond cutoff will get clipped so that is how one should be focusing about regarding selection of q point and again see q point that we identify this q point that we identify based on dc load line and dc load line that we select based on vcc rc at output side and at input side that we select it with the use of vbb and rb see this line this line is having slope this line is having slope that is equals to minus 1 by rb right and this line is having slope this line is having slope that is equals to minus 1 by rc based on these values you can say right so rc vc that will be defining load line and based on load line we define q point right and here biasing will explains you how those load lines are happening with characteristics i hope you have understood all those things still if anything that you like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you Thank you so much for watching this video.